Well, hello there, beloved. Let me show you the new installation of the Stations of the Cross. I recommend you walk these this Lenten season and really any time because it's a beautiful spiritual practice. Let me show you. So the way this works is you'll see a station because there's a cross with some palms crossing it and a red uh, ribbon. We'll get rid of that once people understand, you know, in a few months where the stations are. But also at the foot of the tree, there is a um, plastic packet. And what's in here is actually the, um, the one page description of what's said at each station. So that because this is the entrance and the opening devotions, it starts there with that. When you, you don't have to take it out of the bag, you can leave it in this, and then you can put it right back down here, put the rock back on top, and then head over to this next station. And how do you know where the next station is? Well, it's the station that has the next X, and also if you look closely, you'll see that right on the actual cross itself, there's a number one. If you're confused at all, you can look down, and it says right here, first station, so you know that's the first with first station and then with the prayers. And so let's proceed along and I'll show you more. Here's station number two, station number three. And again, you can know which ones are which because they're numbered on most of the crosses. The metal crosses was hard to get on. See, this is station four and we know it because it says station four, but there's no number here because it's hard to get a number on that metal cross. But as we keep going down, there's five, and they wind all the way down. So I won't stop at every one, but you get the idea of what's here. So the Stations of the Cross is a beautiful ancient meditation on the different paths of Jesus from the judgment of Pilate all the way through to his crucifixion and death. And it's a way for us to meditate on our mortality and the crosses in our life that we bear. And aren't we all bearing quite a few of them this time? of year in 2020 in this environment. What will happen is we'll get here and you come to the 10th one. And you know that because of the number, but also because of down there. And then you'll see 10 rotates around the circle and it comes around this way. There's 11, 12, 13, 14, and the last resurrection is here at the center. And so what's unique about this this year is we have two things. One is we have the extra palms that are here. So if you'd like a palm, please feel free. If you're out and walking this, please feel free to take a palm. We also have quite a few of the prayer rocks that are left over from our interfaith service. We were gonna put those around the peace pole over there but we decided actually it may not be the smartest idea if kids pick them up and maybe throw them through the window. We didn't, so we're holding off from that. But what we're doing now is the suggestion is take, take a prayer rock. And I just picked one randomly. This one says, give thanks for your neighbors. And the idea is take the prayer rock home and pray for the anonymous neighbor that left it. If you'd like to add an additional prayer rock, you can. So you can come over to the bench. You can take a rock and leave a rock. And there's extra rocks and extra markers. And you can leave that here. There's lots of opportunities here to pray, to meditate, to open yourself to God so God's Holy Spirit can be present to you. I strongly urge you this Holy Week to engage in these spiritual activities. And there's a number that we'll do and a number of powerful liturgies. But engage them, them and pour out your heart to God so God can be present to you. May we all have a blessed and powerful Holy Week. May it lead us into the arms of the resurrected Lord. Thanks be to God.